Hi there. So I am going to be posting something in the description box, which is going to correlate itself to a paper that was presented titled Conspiracy Theories in the Patriot Militia Movement by Sam Jackson. This kind of came out from so some research I was going back to doing from looking at this Vegas shooting and it is so concerning that we have so much information given to us in black and white already that shows us the whole entire setup of what's going on and the complete mindfuckery of people at, at settings like this, academic settings, who take and want to mold your thoughts into something that it's not. And these are done by people like this Sam Jackson, who is a candidate for the PhD program at Syracuse University in their School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. They would they they are on my radar now. I went did a cross reference check in WikiLeaks, and it there's some fun information that I'll post in the description box about that too. But this program. Um, and, and I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. If you're interested, I so encourage you to read it. It is, it's, it's fascinating. I would read this as a document that is actually a guide to what you should be paying attention to, because these are the highlights that this individual is saying is just a bunch of conspiracy theories. Okay. This is the program on extremism at the George Washington University. They provide analysis on issues related to violent and nonviolent extremism. It says the program spearheads innovative and thoughtful academic inquiries, producing empirical work that strengthens extremism research. As a distinct field of study, the program aims to develop pragmatic policy solutions that resonate with policymakers, civic leaders, and the general public. Translation of that is they are going to present information that is going to tell you what you should think about it based on their narrative. I find it illuminating that there's a little uh, blurb in the front that specifically expresses that the views in that paper are solely of the author and not necessarily those of the program on extremism in the George Washington University. These people know how to see why a they start off with, um, and they name several, they start off with gun confiscation. And they purport things in each of these categories that I believe are indeed true. But what they do is they take the truth and then they try to, sh he's trying to shift it into ideas and concepts that would just fall under the category of conspiracy theory and you're just crazy. So you'll see under gun confiscation, this is two ideas that are central to this line of thought. First, there are malevolent actors within the government who want to confiscate firearms because they believe that widespread gun ownership prevents them from seizing more power. Yes, that's true. Second, any act that could facilitate confiscate, confiscation will facilitate confiscation. Yes, I believe that is true as well. Boy, I'm, I'm going to take a test. I should make a little survey. Are you a conspiracy theorist. Let's go to two, FEMA camps. Many conspiracy mongers argue that under the auspices of FEMA, the federal government has plans to intern large numbers of Americans in detention camps. Let's see, history would show us that this is actually not so far off in thinking. This is one of my favorites. The United Nations some of these conspiracy theories assert that decisions made in the UN will erode American sovereignty by creating international laws that overrule the US Constitution. Now, after I'm done reading these, I'm going to be posting links in the description box that will support the exact hypothesis that he's trying to negate. Okay? False flags. Conspiracy theorists describe the reports written by 9-11 Commission and the National Institute's Standards of Technology as elaborate attempts by the government to hide the truth of what happened on that day. Yes, that is 
absolutely, yes, yes, I concur with that. That is true. Jade Helm, alleged government plans to use NSA threat matrix scores to decide whether to execute American citizens with government death squads, presumably starting with supporters of the Patriot Militia Movement. Now, I'm going to end there, and I'm just going to go ahead and direct you, please, to the description box where I'm going to put in WikiLeaks files of archived information, PDFs that you can see that support, even though they say none of these theories are supported by evidence, they actually, in fact, are. This is, this is like such a clandestine example of what goes on in our higher institutions and academia, pumping out these very uber smart people who produce these papers, who are just socially engineering the sheeple people to not do their own research, not to look into things, and just to buy anything that these people are telling them, because they may have some sort of acronym or you know, accolade after or preceding their name that suggests that they are smarter than you are. These people aren't smarter than you are. Some of them maybe are in some ways, but this is not, this is in our day and age of society, where we have this information, we can just go online and do our research. I'm going to direct you to, again, multiple, um, <laughs> multiple in, uh, documents that are going to show you this. Just going to take one excerpt out of one, which goes to the UN. It was a thesis paper that shows and describes legal foundations of the United Nations, and it argues that its integrity is based upon the concept of a collective security. It explores, and they're pushing for this now, historical growth of collective security through the successes and failures of organizations who have previously employed its principles. It goes on to detail the main principles of the United Nations Charter, specifically when the use of force is permissible by the organization. All links in the description box. There's a lot of information that comes with this segment that kind of goes back to... Um, how this is just being pushed upon us, the notion of just believing everything that we're told by the mainstream media and public. And it's just so important for people to do their own research and not buy into feeling like they're called a conspiratorial person or a conspiracy theorist or they're crazy because they question the narrative. We can't let this Las Vegas thing go. I believe this is such a huge litmus test that if we can just, if we just start looking at it, Oh, shiny, next object. This is going to be detrimental to the next event that transpires. And there, in fact, there will, there will be a next event. So links in the description box. I'm not going to go on with this. Um, I think it's some pretty great information. And I hope everybody has a great day. Okay, bye.